In this video, we're going to walk through and run some actual partitioner code. We're going to look at the partitioner code, then we're going to run it and see actual partitioning occur. It's absolutely required that you've been through the advanced MapReduce deck, and if you've not, please go ahead and do that now. You should have also looked at the HDFS and MapReduce videos as well. You'll also need a Cloudera VM or a four node cluster. In this exercise, we're going to run the partitioner on the Cloudera VM. It's also highly suggested that you set aside 10 to 15 minutes total to complete all parts of this lesson. And again, please be aware if you're using Amazon, you're going to be charged less than probably about 50 cents per hour. Again, this is only if you're running on AWS. And that amount is rolled forward for every partial hour. So even if you spin this exercise up and complete it in the 10 or 15 minutes that we're talking about, you'll still be charged that 50 cents. And if you keep it running, be aware that those charges are continuing to apply. So let's go ahead and look at some code. If you'll do what I'm doing here and pop over to your Cloudera Quick Start VM, you've installed this previously and you've downloaded the code, hopefully in that same video where we walk through that installation. So here we're dropped into our home directory. We opened a terminal. Let's cd into code and data. And then let's go into the code directory and the partitioner directory inside of that. And if we look inside of here, we're going to see several files. You probably recognize word count and the mapper and the reducer from possibly previous videos you went through with regards to running a MapReduce job in Java. This is new right here, this word count partitioner. Let's go ahead and see what's inside of here. Let's open word count partitioner.java. I'm using Emacs and I'm going to take a look here at the top. We just see our standard imports. Here you see that we're creating a new class called word count partitioner that's extending from the base partitioner class and it's passing in our key value pairs that we expect to get this would be pretty much the same thing that the reducer sees coming in. We're going to run this word count again over Shakespeare, but we're partitioning into a couple different lists. Inside the partitioner, you have to create a bit of code called git partitioner. You have to create a function inside of here that's going to return an integer. And this integer needs to be zero to one less the number of reducers that you're using. So in this exercise, we're using three reducers we're going to need to pass back a number from zero to two. So here you see that our key and value pairs match up. Our text key that we're calling it matches the generic that we're passing in and our interwritable value matches that generic, just as we've seen before. And then this function also needs to accept the number of reduced tasks. Here you see I'm creating two lists, one called old words that were maybe alive in the days of Shakespeare, and one called timeless words, words that exist pretty much out of time. And I've populated a few words in each list, ideally in a large data set. You'd probably have thousands or hundreds of thousands of words inside of here. I'm initializing the reducer number that we pass back to zero. And then if we browse down in the code a little bit, you can see then that I convert the input key to a string. And I say, if that string exists in the old words, I'm going to return reducer number one. And if it exists in the timeless words, I'm going to return reducer number two. And then here at the bottom of the code, I just return the reducer number. This is really how simple the partitioner function typically is. The only thing that's new in here is I've just included the Java util arrays so that I can go through and see this contains real quick. So let's go ahead and hop back out of this code. The other important part of this is making sure that I hook it up in my driver. So let's browse our wordcount.java file. And again, we're not editing it. And you see that the two new bits of code that I put in here are set the partitioner class where I'm passing in the custom partitioner. Again, this name needs to match what I called my class. The file name doesn't matter so much. It's what the class is inside. And then here I'm statically setting the number of reduced tasks to three. This might be better set dynamically and we'll cover how to do that in other lessons. And let's hop out of here. And we're going to go ahead and compile our code with our standard Java C command. Class path is the output of the Hadoop class path command. Again, these are backticks right here. And we're going to compile all of our Java code. And we should now see a bunch of dot class files, which we do. And we're going to jar these files up. So we're going to jar and create a file called word count partitioner dot jar. And we're going to use all of our dots class files in that jar. I forgot some stuff here. We got to do jar dash cvf. And let's go ahead and look. We should have a dot jar file. Great. And let's go ahead and run it with a Hadoop jar, giving it the name of our jar. 
and copy and paste that guy. And we're going to give it the name of the method that contains where we're starting, which is still word count. And we're going to give it the input of Shakespeare. And we're going to give it the output directory of word count dash partitioner. So we see our partitioned output. And go ahead and push enter there. And it's going to churn for a bit. While this is coming up, let's go ahead and open a browser and open our name node web GUI so we can get a look at our output coming out. You can either click on this link to go into the name node, or you could just go directly to 50070. Let's go ahead and push browse the file system and go into my Cloudera directory, user Cloudera. And here you see that we've got some output from previous exercises and the output of the word count partitioner. Let's go ahead and load this up. And we'll just stay here until the job completes. And what we expect to see when this is all done is that there will be three outputs, and they will each be part r 0 through 0 Three individual reducer outputs, and we should see one containing anything that is not an old word or a timeless word. One output would contain all of the outputs of the timeless words and one would contain the word counts of all of the quote-unquote old words from Shakespeare's day. This is kind of interesting, too. You can see here the reducers are kicking up in equal thirds. So that's showing us, because we're on one single machine and we only have one reducer slot available, we ran one reducer at a time. So you can see that our job completed, and you can see that we had three reduced tasks that ran there from our output as well. Right here, the number of launched reduced tasks. Let's go ahead and refresh our name node in this directory. And sure enough, you see part 000, 001, and 002. So let's go ahead and open these up. 001 contained everything except for the old and timeless words. So that's really hard to tell what's in there. Let's look at 001. And boom, we see that this contains our quote unquote old words. So we partitioned out any of the words that were old. And if we look at part 002, sure enough, it did not find a lowercase i, but it found love and you and has the outputs of that. So you can see that our partitioner code is alive and well, and it's working, doing what we expect it to do. I hope you enjoyed that quick walkthrough and run of the partitioner code. You've got the live code. Remember, you can experiment with it, create your own partitions. Some other interesting things to do is take a data set and partition on some temporal dependency, like the month of year, or the day of week, or the hour of day. And we've got the GSOD data set. You're welcome to experiment with. It has weather output data for different weather stations, and you can partition that perhaps by the month of year. We've got a 2014 and a 2013 data set in your slash code and data slash data directory, and you're welcome to create a new partitioner and walk through that.